Hi, this is the Intelligent Computer Podcast, and today's topic is Essential Components of Stored Purpose Machine Intelligence. Stored Purpose is a complete design for implementing intelligence in machine systems. Some of the features, attributes, processes, information stores we may talk about have comparable features in nature. So today we'll talk about those essential components of stored purpose, including the two big architectures, Emma and its existence, platonic forms and general intelligence algorithm, and Mika, which is the construction model that covers cells and instruments and other mecha technology. So first with those architectures, as we mentioned, Emma. Emma is our existence model. It's the reason why something intelligent exists. It's that definition of self as identity and the mechanism that enables it to maintain that self. And then the multi-level intelligent cellular architecture that is Mika, and a mouthful of that, um, does allow simple functional intelligent entities based on Emma to become complex entities. And that occurs when we superimpose those two architectures, taking individual Emma elements and using those to create more complex entities. So the existence models information store is the platonic form. And we went back to Plato in 380 BC, a really good book if you would like to read that, The Republic. It talks about from the cave there are forms that are eternal. A chair is a chair, a green frog is a green frog, and there's ways to maintain that. So we essentially just made that happen. We, we created what Plato envisioned. And then processing, we use the general intelligence algorithm. And that enables those forms that define identity to, to connect to the real world. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So the platonic form, that information store, its basis is something we created called the purpose hypergraph. Uh, for those of you that know how graphs work, they're pretty simple data structures with um, symbols and connections. And ours aren't much different. Ours has contextual fabric, which is the core structure, the, the, the landscape definition for symbolic information. Um, and it defines context much like you would think of context this near this or at this time. And then subgraphs that define the, the forms, the, the form of knowledge that is injected at the various points of context or linked as we say in graph terminology. And we've got them for ancestry that might make a plank, the ancestor of a door, coincidence and causality, the turning of the handle, the preceding the opening of a door, state domains and goal pursuit, which define boundary conditions and the methods of connecting technology to those boundary transitions. And then shape graphs, which are key for putting something like the shape of a door in a mind or the progression of a play. And then technologies, again, to link that um, identity um, and the uh, alignment of that to the real world and context where all, all knowledge must be linked to to be true knowledge. And as we mentioned before, it's just connections and symbolic data in rows. And um, all of those come together. Um, the goals of an entity combine to create the aggregate of purpose. Um, and then all of the purpose of an entity come together to create its identity. So uh, it's actually pretty straightforward if you think about it. All the purpose makes your identity. And it sounds kind of um, kind of obvious there. Um, and we just made it computable. So from the processing side, that's where Gia comes in. What a lady. She does a lot of work. Um, we've, we've defined seven key outcomes that general, al general intelligence algorithm will create. Depending on the, the, the purpose of an entity, it may not execute all uh, points of the algorithm at any one time, but the way it works is you shouldn't look at it as a sequential thing. That algorithm is performed continuously to make it work. And the algorithm and um, the information store make Emma this, this complex but um, functional, computable, um, intelligent entity. But that's a, that's a fairly simple intelligent entity. So if you want to make something that's more, a bit more complex, you need to go to Mika. And what Mika does is, uh, you know, and this is something where we're defining the most efficient, intelligent mechanical system. And then we're amazed when at the end of the day, we look up and go, my, this is exactly how nature was designed. Um, so maybe we're not too far off in what we're doing here. But so Mika says that that, that Emma entity is a cell. It's a component. And on many levels of combinations of those cells, you can create more complex entities. On the mecha tech world, we're, we call those those cells instruments. 
and those instruments come together um, on levels we call L1, L2, L3, L4, and ultimately L5 to make more complex entities all the way up to the ecosystem level. So it could be a light in a lighting array of, of that's an L2 system, a light array, and that light could be with audio and video to be, you know, an L3 system where it's you're creating an audio visual system for a theater. And on an L4 level, you could combine all the different components of, of, of a theater system, the ticketing system, all to become one metacomputer or a body, as we say in biotech terms. So just to quickly go through that again, because this is kind of complicated, levels one through five. Level one is an Emma entity. It's based on that Emma architecture, and here we call it the cell and the instrument. And it could be a skin cell on the biotech world or an entry door controller that's on the mechatech side. And a cell group, so if you've got all the doors together or all the cells in a valve in the heart, that's that level two. And level three, you've got different valve and, and, and different um, components of the heart all coming together to create this complex entity, which by the way, the heart isn't directly controlled by the brain if you didn't know that. It just takes stimulus as the, the body is predicting its need for oxygen, sends little messages off and the heart then um, you know, has the oxygen that the blood needs when you need it. And a surgical room, for example, could have different lighting systems, could have different um, imaging systems, all of those coming together to create a, a, an L3 entity, but, and that could be part of a larger hospital, or the, the audiovisual system can be part of a larger theater, intelligent theater, or a bird is a, is a le level four system. We are level four systems. The assistant agent that'll help you in your mobile and you know, do everything you need it to do. That's a level four entity. And then we won't talk much about this, but on the ecosystem level, that's that um, we have multiple entities coming together. There's methods to balance the, the various entity interactions there using um, types of messenger agents. Um, in the biotech world, um, um, viruses, um, bacteria, um, even and mosquitoes are those types of agents. Here we're just showing some of the, the data structures behind um, that those, those purpose hypergraphs, you know, how that, that looks a bit. And um, here we're seeing showing a form that is purpose. So forms contain other forms, but the same data underneath it is all that purpose hypergraph. Here showing how in graph terms, you know, not fancy numbers, you know, you, there's a shape that is stored and this is in a logarithmic whip um, mapping the shape of a door, um, but it also could be the shape of a room. And here we're showing in a form for room that defines the bath that includes a shower and in includes other components, all based on that same shape data that was the plank which is the ultimate ancestor. So very small amounts of additional data are needed to enable that plank, um, uh, the room to be defined because we've got basis forms um, such as the plank that are simple and, and, and can be reused over and over. And, and I think we see that when you, we look at chromatin, the basis of our DNA, there are components that are used over and over again because they have, they're so versatile. Um, and here we're looking at it implemented in a metacomputer where you've got an agency, multiple agents, and each are sort of like loaded into a MySQL database, if you can imagine, where there's a stored procedure set that is general intelligence algorithm. And that when you load the identity into that database, it's processed and then run across the various different elements of the metacomputer to make an intelligent entity exist. You know, that's sort of how it'll be in the future when all systems are upgraded to store purpose. The general intelligence algorithm, it, in the middle there, there's a synthetic file system that enables you to write, just like in a file system on a PC, except you can write forward and backwards in time. So it's a little bit different there as a twist. Here, just a user interface. The difference is the agent lives behind the, 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 the devices. So if you touch on the file, it knows if you're a doctor in a room with a patient, you're talking about the patient's file most likely. And if you want to flick that file over to the display, it knows the display sitting on the wall right next to you is pretty much what you want to talk to, uh, to um, send it to. So if you, you send it over to it, you might be just confirming what the agent already knows you want to do. Those same agents will help us with our homes, our hospitals, all working through various different devices of the metacomputer, including the mobile device we just displayed. So that's it for our presentation today on the essential components of stored purpose computing. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at wjones.com or visit our contact page and just send us a note. We'd be happy to chat with you. Thanks again. This is Warren Jones.